All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have an important announcement from Mark Witten. This is very important. Um, I pray, I pray, I pray that what Mark has said here in this letter, I've read a little bit of it, is going to be consistent. It's going to stay this way. That's the big question is, is unity going to pull the rug out from us under it, uh, under us again? Um, I don't know, but let's go ahead and read what Mark has to say here. So this is Mark Witten. Um, he's the lead of Unity Create, which includes the Unity engine and the editor teams. Uh, he wants to start off by saying sorry, which that's good. Good start so far. Uh, we should have spoken with you more and we should have incorporated more of your feedback before announcing our new runtime policy. Our goal with this policy is to ensure we continue to support you today and tomorrow and keep deeply investing in our game engine. You are what makes Unity great. And we know and we listen. And this, by the way, this is what's just so frustrating to me um, about this whole situation, which is everybody's mad at Unity. And really, really who we should be mad at is the leadership. When I think about the community, guys, think about when you Google a solution for Unity, when you go to the forums, when you go to the Unity answers, and all of the developers who created Unity um, with us and built an amazing uh, piece of software. It has its, its issues. But think about all those people, that community. Um, I like that Mark's acknowledging this here. You are what makes Unity great, and we need to listen. It's Guys, it's not the Unity, Unity is not defined by just the poor leadership, right? It's actually defined by the community. That is a truly one of the best parts of Unity, which is the community. Before we continue reading this, guys, I did want to let you know you should click below and check out the top three secrets to making six figures. Uh, this is an awesome free course, totally free, no gimmicks. It's going to teach you how to make six figures with just a demo. I've done this multiple times, regardless of having, you know, Unity or Unreal or Godot experience, you can make six figures with just a demo. Click below, check it out. All right, let's go. Our Unity Personal plan will remain free and there will be no runtime fee for games built on Unity Personal. That's great news. That's a, that's a big change. So anybody using the free version is not gonna owe a penny, even, even if they go over the 200,000 copies and $200,000 mark, which the previous policy had, okay? The one that was released last week. They're also going to be increasing the cap from $100,000 to $200,000. And by the way, currently, if you make over $100,000, you have to uh, get Unity Pro and Unity Enterprise. What Unity is saying right now is it's an olive branch. They're saying, hey, you actually don't have to get Unity Pro or Unity Enterprise with $100,000. We're going to increase that to $200,000. So this is actually better for, for developers than the policy last year even. Okay, so this is good news, and this is a big deal. We're gonna remove the requirement to use the Made with Unity splash screen. By the way, this splash screen has been on the Unity software, the free version, since I can remember. This is a 10-year-old policy. They're removing this completely. So all of you who are using personal, Unity personal, no more Made with Unity splash screen. That's a big deal. No game with less than $1 million in trailing 12-month revenue will be subject to any fee. That's a big deal. Now, for those of us, and I'm, I'm saying us because I'm hopeful that I do one day next year hit over $1 million when we release our next game. For those of us in, <clears throat> in Unity Pro and Unity Enterprise, and again, those are people who's, who make over $200,000 in gross revenue, there are changes as well based on the feedback. The runtime fee policy will only apply beginning with the next LTS version of Unity, shipping in 2024. Now the question is here guys, what is a runtime fee policy? So we're gonna read about what that <clears throat> actual fee is. Is it based on installs? Is it based on some creepy algorithm uh, that's basically malware put into your software? What is it? Looks like it's only this, this fee that developers are gonna owe, again, who have Unity Pro or Unity Enterprise making over 200, or over actually, it's over a million dollars. <laughs> okay, so if you make over a million dollars, that runtime fee is going to apply. And we're gonna read about that in a second. Your games that are currently shipped and the projects you are currently working on will not be included. Good. So my game, Twisted Tower, it's safe. As long as I don't use the new LTS. We'll see if they do something creepy here and like basically break the previous versions to force us. And I would not be surprised because they've done stuff like this before where they force me to use the new version. They say, what? We weren't gonna charge you for the previous version. Um, it's not our fault. 
when in reality you broke it on purpose so that you forced me to the next version, okay? I'm not saying they've done that exactly, but they've done things to kind of push and prod developers in certain directions, okay? Your games that are currently shipped and the projects you are currently working on are not included, okay? This is great. Unless you want to upgrade them to the new version of Unity. Now, what is this runtime fee policy? We will make sure that you can stay, what is this? We, can, we will make sure that you can stay on the terms applicable for the version of Unity editor you're using. Good, as long as you keep using that version. Okay, that's good enough for me, for my game, that's fine. But let's, let's keep going here. What is this runtime fee? For games that are subject to the runtime fee, and again, these are games that make over a million dollars in trailing 12 month revenue, okay? Those games are subject to a 2.5% rev share. So that's 2.5% of their revenue, right? The money that that game makes, they owe 2.5% um, to Unity. Or, this is what I don't quite understand, or we can choose the calculated amount based on the number of new people engaging with your game each month. I don't know what that means. So let me know in the comments below if you know what that means, guys. Both of these numbers are self-reported. So this right here, this is wonderful. And we'll talk about all why none of this is wonderful in just a second. <laughs> but this right here is currently wonderful, which is, this is self-reported data. Let's compare this to Unreal. Unreal's policy is what? 5% based on self-reported, over a million dollars. Again, 5%. Over a million dollars in gross revenue, self-reported. Okay, I really should say net revenue. It's based, I think it's the, the, the actual net proceeds that the developer gets, they owe 5% of that. So Unity's policy as it stands with this memo here is better. Now, why is this not? Okay, there's one major issue here, and these are two things that I, I was... I was telling myself for the last week, they have to do these two things if, if, if developers are actually going to trust them, okay? The two things are this. Number one, some kind of change in leadership. Something related to the leadership. They, it doesn't look like they're doing it. Number two, a promise or a guarantee. Something like a public announcement saying, these terms will not be changed for two years, for three years, blah, blah, blah. I understand changing percentages of a rev share that's normal for companies like Unreal, but because Unity screwed the pooch, they're gonna have to make some kind of promise and they didn't. So I would be surprised if developers are going to just 100% forgive them and cheer and be excited. Currently as it stands, this is great, but there's no guarantee that this is not going to change. Anyways, uh, looks like Mark is gonna be on Jason Wyman's channel, which is amazing. Jason's a good friend of mine. Um, for a live fireside chat. That's, that's awesome. Um, that's at 4 p.m. So look, you know, maybe Mark's gonna give us some clarity about how long this is gonna last, right? How long is this new policy gonna last? And in fact, I might even message Jason right now and just say, can you ask him? I'm gonna do that. Let's go ahead and message Jason. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna pull up this Twitter here um, really quickly, I mean, right after I end this call, or not this call, this this uh, video here, I'm going to uh, I'm going to message Jason and say, "Can you ask this question?" This is a big deal. The question I need to ask Mark is, "How long does this apply?" Right? And is there any leadership change? So let's get some feedback from the community, guys. Um, all of these studios. This is after their post. This is Unity's post. Uh, this is from Game Studios Disappointed by Unity. All of these studios, indies, and individuals are the reason this change has come about. All of them who fought back, who put their arguments on the table, are the ones who fought for this. It is at least something. Now it is, hands hand now it is in the hands of the customers, business partners, and so on to eventually forgive your mistakes. Okay, we'll see if the forgiveness occurs. Look, a major issue for me is that you're both asking for pro license fees still and then adding the install fee or rev share. Let's pick a lane. Maybe, I don't know. Um, thank you, thank you for listening to us. That's from Soren. Uh, and again, this right here from Alex is exactly what my concern has always been. Alex says, I don't trust it. No guarantee that this won't happen in the future after I've invested hundreds of hours into a project. Still switching to Unreal. Hundreds, bro, rookie numbers. How about thousands? 
Um, exactly. I mean, this is the big issue, guys, is how long is this new policy going to stay in place? Unity is just in the arena trying things. Glad to see the changes. Okay. <clears throat> Spoon says, now this actually makes sense. Um, so it looks like overall, guys, people are, are feeling pretty good, feeling, feeling pretty good about this. Um, I think that, sure, um, absolutely, it is better. But again, how long is this going to last? Two and a half percent rev share definitely is better. Okay. Um, RJ says, thanks for this. So it looks like it looks like developers are feeling pretty good about this. Um, the last Don says you have done great damage to your brand. It's really unbelievable how you thought you could get away with this. I'm not sure the trust will ever be the same. I think I think they're going to have to do some work here. Um, so, Cade Peterson says this should have come from the top instead. I, I don't know if I agree with that. I don't think anyone's going to want to listen to the CEO right now. I'm not saying he's a bad guy. Um, the, it was a terrible decision, but all I'm saying is the developers don't want to hear from the CEO right now. I don't. I think they would be pissed. Um, <laughs> so anyway, all right, guys, uh, be sure to check out this webinar below. It's totally free. It's not a gimmick. I'm not trying to sell you anything. Uh, top three secrets to making six figures selling your indie games. Uh, it's cool because I do this. I've done this like four or five different times. I've sold my game before I even finish it and I make six figures. I teach you how to do it. It's how to work with publishers, how to in, uh, pitch to investors and publishers, how to do Kickstarter campaigns, how to use multiple streams of re uh, income. This is all free below, click below. I will see you at the free course. Again, it's called the top three secrets to making six figures selling your indie games.